Let's get into the tokenomics of Sol, the native token to the Solana blockchain. Tokenomics in cryptocurrency is extremely important. Well, let's look at the supply. Let's look at different inflation rates. Let's look at what's going on. Knowing these things, understanding when you're investing in cryptocurrency is extremely important. This is not financial advice. Do not take any of my advice when investing in cryptocurrencies. This is just for information, educational purposes only. Let's uh, get right into this. So here we're on CoinGecko. And we have our circulating supply and we have our total supply. What's interesting with Solana is there are quite a few blockchains that have max supplies and then there's the circulating supply. Uh, however, with Solana, there is technically no max supply. So the inflation can happen indefinitely. I'm gonna go over the inflation rates and what that's looking like. But it is interesting because there is kind of two different inflation rates. Now, looking at circulating supply, that is going to be all the tokens that are actually on the that are on the blockchain that are able to be traded and used and staked and all these things. The total supply is this number that is quite vague. So Let's look more at the Solana tokenomics. This uh, graph here, you've probably already seen, and this is actually a big point that people who do not like Sol uh, look at this allocation of Solana, of Sol tokens. And as you can see, a lot of the tokens um, went to foundations, seed sales, investors, the team, not as many went out into the retail market and to investors like you and me, which makes people say that Seoul seems more centralized and less decentralized, which uh, is quite true. It probably is more centralized. Uh, but anyways, so we had 20% to the foundation, 25% to the seed sale, 20% to the uh, founding sale, strategic sale, 3% to strategic sale, 8.2% to validator sale. Public auction sale was only 2.6%. So that is very low. If we look here at the initial token distribu distribution of Sol, so there is this chart here of the Sol supply schedule. It gives you an idea here from December 20th. This is basically when all the tokens were issued. Uh, these are all the different amounts here. This is all basically the uh, what you would call the centralized group of holders here. And then this green part here is going to be your staking rewards inflation. And it says by uh, November 32, we're gonna have a, this is the total supply. This doesn't necessarily mean the total circulation of Solana, which I think to me, the circulating amount is more important because that's actually what is being traded and bought and sold and such. So here it's stating by November 2032, we will have 800 million total supply of sold. These here were your funding rounds. 3.17 million was raised in a seed 2018 at 40 cents. Uh, 12 million was raised at 20 cents. Another 5 million was raised at 22 cents back in 2019. 1.8 million was raised in 2020 for 22 cents. So these early investors got in extremely early. And if you've been in Seoul for a little bit, you saw the pump last year up to the high 200s. They made crazy, crazy, crazy returns if they sold. If they sold, we don't know for sure. Um, now, what is something that's good to know is I wanted to see when these tokens were able to be sold or dumped on the open market to see if there is a date that we might be waiting for that the supply could spike. Now from uh, Masari.io, most of the information here is stating around January 7th, 2021, the majority of these pre-seed, these seed sales, these investor sales became unlocked. So those have already been unlocked and have been able to be sold on the market. How much those were sold, we don't necessarily know. There's a 12.5% here that was issued to founders allocation. This won't be fully unlocked and vested until January, 2023, but it will be vested monthly. So they can sell increments of this soul on the open market. Now there was a grant pool you have 35 million community reserve tokens uh, in 5 million token increments. This was unlocked January 2021. So it looks like the majority of these 
early investors have been able to sell since January of 2021. So that date has already passed. Uh, how much they still hold, we don't know for sure, but this is good to look at. Now, the thing that I wanted to look into is the inflation. Inflation to me is extremely important when investing in currencies, and the US dollar has crazy inflation right now, and a lot of these crypto currencies, especially the proof of stake, have inflation. When you look up Solana inflations, these are the quick numbers you find. The initial inflation rate is 8%. The disinflation rate is 15%. So supposedly the inflation is supposed to decrease by 15% every single year until we get to the long-term inflation rate of 1.5% annually with no max. Now that is the inflation rate of the total supply. That is not the inflation of the circulating supply. So let's go over this uh, proposed inflation schedule. This will vary based on the amount of Solana that is locked or staked on the network. So annual inflation, this date here, is as of January 20, or sorry, January 25, 2020. And this will be, this will show each year the inflation rate of the total supply of Solana will decrease over a 10 year period where 10 years, so that'd be 2030, we'll have a total supply inflation of 1.5%. This is going to be the, the number of total supply. So we basically started out at 500 million uh, total supply of Solana and in 15 years we'll be up at 750 million total Solana tokens. Now if we look here at example staked yield, so see if you look at this graph here it shows you how there's an annual staking yield percentage and that's either more or less depending on how much is staked for Sol. So say only 60% of Sol is staked you're gonna have a 13% annual yield. If 90% of Sol of staked, you're gonna have an 8% annual yield. However, most uh, staking wallets, you'll see, last time I checked, we were getting about 6% on Solana. So you wanna be staking your Solana to help combat a bit with this inflation. And then you'll see here after 10 years that the supply inflation will hit this 1.5% percent right here. So this chart here is showing you the, this chart goes over the inflation of the total supply of Solana. Uh, I made a video about the inflation and tokenomics of Kadena. I also like that project as well. I'll link it in my description. You can check it out. Uh, one of the, uh, one of my followers talked about comparing it to the inflation of Solana. Um, and you know, it seems like cryptocurrency is very campy. Everyone's camp Team Solana, Team Cadena, Team Cardano. I don't prescribe to really any of this. Uh, I think there is a lot of unknowns, uncertainties in this space. I like to diversify my portfolio amongst a bunch of different projects that I see the potential of there being growth and seeing who wins. I don't like to be all in on one thing and necessarily trash one thing. Seems like the narratives switch a lot. So that's kind of my approach to this. And I am a holder of Solana. I'm also a holder of Cadena. I'm also a holder of Cardano. I'm also a holder of Avalanche. So when I'm making videos about these things, it doesn't necessarily mean this is the only thing I believe in. I see people talking about videos of someone bashing Cadena and they go, oh, he's a Solana holder and all this. And you know, I, I don't know. There's bad things about Solana. There's bad things about Cadena. There's bad things about Avalanche. There's good things about Avalanche and Solana and Ethereum. And, and th there are pluses and minuses to all these projects. You have to figure out what makes sense with your investing um, strategy. Now, this chart here by Masari.io to me is very important. This is over the five-year period. Uh, this blue part is our circulating supply of Sol. The gray line here, this is our price action. Now, uh, it would make sense that, um, you know, when there was, actually, if you look at this, the price of Sol isn't necessarily, yes, right now it looks like, oh yeah, the circulating supply has gone up, the price is down, that makes sense, there's more supply, but really this is a demand situation. The demand has just decreased a lot. There was a ton of demand here for Solana, there's less demand here. Yes, there is more, uh, the supply has gone up, but is not a direct correlation. The, the, 
circulating supply of sold, sold does not directly correlate between the price action or else this gray line would be generally following this downwards like this, right? If, this, if they were directly correlated, you'd have a much smoother, uh, you'd have a higher, you'd have a higher original price here and it would kind of come down because there'd be, that would be saying there's equal demand basically. And I kind of have referenced this in comments in my other videos that the the supply the inflation these things is really important but so much that drives these coins is demand and uh, or the price action of these coins is demand and whatever that may be whether it's a narrative whether it's the actual tech whether it's user bases tvl uh, all these different things they all come into play when valuating the market of a uh, cryptocurrency so this is the circulating supply of soul and this is the actual amount that is out there being traded now this information here is quite important it says the circulating supply acknowledges that tokens may be held by projects foundations which have no intent to sell down their positions but which have not locked up supply in a formal contract thus circulating supply does not include known project treasury holdings which can be significant note that an investor may must Carefully consider both liquid and circulating supplies when evaluating an asset. The two can be very significantly a risk depending entirely on circulating supply is that the number can change dramatically based on discretionary sale from project treasury. So they're saying there is a possibility that there are other coins that are kind of circulating but or that are out there, but they're not necessarily being traded at this very time, but they could come onto the market. And anyways, but the number to me that is extremely important when I'm looking at this. So this is the five-year chart. We can look at the one year chart here. Now this does look like there is a direct correlation, um, but basically this is just the bull run ending, moving into a bear market and the supply is still going up. Uh, this is mainly going to be from staking emissions. But look here, I wanted to put in the date. Today is September 7th, 2022. So a year ago, we had 292 million in circulating supply. Today we have 349 million. We've had a 20% increase of circulating supply. So even though the total supply has this annual inflation of 8%, uh, we have a circulating supply inflation of 20%. That is uh, quite a bit of supply, but as I, or that is quite a bit of inflation. But as I showed earlier, that the price doesn't necessarily directly correlate to the amount of inflation. So when this bear market ends and the bull market comes back, can Solana pump? and can the demand outweigh the inflation and bring up the price? Absolutely. Is there more circulating um, soul tokens than there was back during the last bull market? So we can look here. Uh, during the last peak peak of the bull market, we had 302 uh, million Solana tokens. So let's actually look at what the inflation has been since that date. Let's go back to November 8th. So if you look here, we have had an increase in circulation since the last peak of the price of Solana of 16%. Now, if it was directly correlated, the price would have only dropped by 16%. But obviously, as you can see, that's not the case. It's dropped by like 80, 90. It's dropped by a crazy amount. Uh, but that's cryptocurrencies. It's unregulated. There's a lot of retail money. Uh, there's a lot of big players here that probably sold huge bags and made out with crazy, crazy gains. So that's just uh, part of Solana, or that's just part of cryptocurrency. So this is uh, interesting. This is interesting to note as well. It says ongoing emissions. Solana validators voted to enable PICO inflation on December 24th, 2020. The sole supply is now inflating at an annual rate of 0.1%. I guess from 2020 to 2021, there basically wasn't really any inflation to the total supply, 0.1%. And then uh, they said the final inflation proposal includes an initial annual inflation of 8%, decreases 15% annually, and down to 1.5% of that total supply. But as you can see here, the uh, annual circulating supply has been inflating by 20%, uh, which from a currency perspective is not good, but this is cryptocurrency, these prices move really fast. Uh, this is, um, yeah, so hopefully you enjoyed this uh, quick breakdown of the tokenomics of Solana. If you did, please like the video, subscribe to my channel, doesn't cost you anything, especially a little like to the video, or leave your comment, leave, it, leave your thoughts. Uh, tell me if you think I'm wrong. Tell me if you think I'm right. I don't mind either way. And uh, yeah, let's keep going. Woo!